Well, one thing art does, it becomes a cipher of the community. And at the same time, it, it's a way to, to galvanize connection in a community. It becomes a plinth or a, or a loci where people come together. It could be an object or an experience, a performance, a sculpture. All these things are a way to discuss the human condition. It really does bring together people and it, it changes the dialogue and conversation in a region. When I first came to town in the 70s, to get here I would drive through Brattleboro and Brattleboro had hippies and they had a co-op and they had stores with like cool stuff in them and we come to Bennington and it was it was kind of like the way it's supposed to be kind of it wasn't like ad living at all there was there was energy here but it was all directed from other places but there was very little collaboration going mm -hmm. on and um, somewhere it switched I'm connected to the North Bennington Art Park since the beginning and it really became um, um, from an idea that I had at the post office getting mail when I saw Willard Beffley's sculpture there uh, one morning. And it was like a flash. We're, we're surrounded by artists of all different media in this area. And, and we need to create a conduit, a place where all these artists come together. And I said, man, what if we could bring in established and non-established artists? and put out the invite and see what we can get. And I thought that was a great idea. And so I started making a lot of calls. But 25 years ago when the, the North Bennington Art Park started, um, we started it skeletally and we only had about six sculptures. And those sculptures were, again, from a random group of artists. And I remember we had maybe 25 people show up. And as those six sculptures were there, it became even more obvious that this show could grow. And we had a lot of fun because we, the people that would come, even the first event or the first opening was a real uh, cross-section or demographic of the area. And friends of friends and people that are of all, of all ages but all orientations. Doing people that were in second shift at the factory down the street at National Hangar, to artists, to art critics, to people from the college, professors, uh, people that cleaned houses, bartenders, waitstaff, farmers. And I thought that was brilliant. One of the things that's very different about the Embo show, especially what I, the way I see it, is that we have a lot of sculptors in the show who are serious professional sculptors, that's all they do. They're in a lot of shows, they could commissions, but we also have, you know, people in the show who, who just want to make a piece. The vibe of it is that it's, it's okay for emerging artists to be there. You know, it's, there are professional artists, and I think that we're really kind of towing a line here that is, fragile in a way because we're inviting you know my plumber put a piece in one year on the day of the show he walked in and i made a little label and he put it down and and you know people feel comfortable doing that it's very open and it is uh I, the word lowbrow has come up a few times you know especially around the opening it's not wine and cheese and crackers it was began at bennington college for Bennington College students to be able to experiment outside of the college walls. So in other words, you would make something that you were uncertain about or that you were experimenting with, and it was you would be putting in front of people in the village. And so I felt like, well, you know, that's what, that's what the show is about. That's what the show started about, and that's kind of what it should continue to be about. I think one of the strengths of, of, of the North Bankton show is that it's, it's location and it's really accessible. I mean, when I think of uh, sculpture parks like Storm King or The Mount or, you know, even Southern Vermont Art Center, these are places where you have to go to. Some of them cost money. They're, they're places you go for culture, for, for that. To, and it, the great thing about North Bennington is 
you witness it as you go to work. You can't avoid the sculpture, it's in your face. And as we're saying on the poster this year, sunrise to sunset, seven days a week. It's open all the time and it's free. It's really accessible. There's no barriers to hold you back from coming to it. It's funky and it's, um, you know, to be able to show, uh, it's not a formal area to, and these other places are very formal. And um, so to have people give up their lawns and their, you know, and be able to walk all over North Bennington and see art is, is quite wonderful. I think that that's why it's very unique. We did a show during the pandemic two years ago when a lot of people were not doing anything. And that's how, when we started doing things at the museum as well, because the museum was closed, which was uh, a great new annex of the show and has really added a lot to it. And uh, a lot of the artists are really also very, very happy to show here at the museum. And I see that as part of the community too. It's not just North Bennington, it's, it's, it's Bennington in general. I think the history of the show and the history of sculpture in North Bennington, it's, it's a strength, but it's also a strength that I think is still being told and is being told more. I think the Bennington Museum's done a good job of bringing the fine arts and the history uh, you know, that was happening in the 60s and 70s you know, to light here. But I think there still is more, you know, the sculpture piece, I think, has, is still a story that can be told more and, and is, seems to be coming to light the more that sculpture is shown. My parents were both artists and they took us to um, museums instead of churches. <laughs> and so, um, no boss is, is like that. It's a, it's a reverence, even though some of the pieces are irre very irreverent. <laughs> It's a reverence for art in a very uh, rich community. It feels like more than a show. It's a reunion. It's an annual gathering of the, of the local scene, of all the yeah. artists, and sort of maybe going, whoa, we are surrounded by like, a lot of interesting and creative people. And then Joe took it that step further of bringing in more regional artists and, mm -hmm. and making it more of just a, you know, a fun picnic with hot dogs and PBRs and, and really creating a show out of it. And I think that if I can't jump ahead just a teeny bit, my hope is that, you know, with this connection with the museum and everything else now, that we really start getting more on the map, per se, as a, as a, as a sculpture show that's worth visiting. If you're going to Mass Mocha and you want to make your way north to the next show, you stop at this one too, you know? The whole thing with Enboss, it's, it's simple and direct. And we, Joe McGovern and I would always laugh because we thought it was, it's still, it's great to have mason trays and wheelbarrows full of ice and PBR and have them surrounded in a, in a, in a half circle. And then you have a live band. And I thought that it was magical with ballet dancers over there and, and you have 30 sculptures or 40 sculptures. And I just thought that was amazing. And then having the, the, the stables emboldened with painting and performance art and uh, one time we even had someone strapped to a car in a chicken mask going up and down the street at 40 miles an hour. And another piece that was actually running on a cam that was being uh, powered by a 1972 Cadillac. And it was called Greatest American Hero. And John Umplet was in a three-piece suit and these, these rods would move him as if he was flying at, 30, at 25 feet. And I just thought that was the, the funniest, but most beautiful and amazing, one of the most amazing things I've seen. There have been a lot of people part of this show that usually don't have the time um, to actually work on things anymore. They used to, but life got complicated. But this show has also given people a point in time where they can work toward a goal. And regardless how complicated your life gets as you get older, they can, they can make the time and work toward that goal all year. And that's given people uh, a reactivated that aspect of who they are as artists. Probably like me, this is one of the few shows you do, right? Yeah, that's right. And uh, it's because like, you have to make a living. And people think of like me as a teacher, maybe Michael as a tree guy, but then this opportunity comes around like yeah. every year to finally get your art on. And it's, 
it's kind of great to, you know, have a little bit of that stress and that timeline and that, yeah. I remember you saying to me like, that you made something the night before and that you always do it that way often. Is that still true? I make it in time to, to install it. Yeah. Um, sometimes the morning of the show, I'm yeah. working on it. Um, yeah, I get that. I've been there. <laughs> try to make uh, one, I call it making one monument a year. Yeah. A monument being something that's bigger than I am. Yeah, that's really cool. Sometimes installing some of these huge sculptures, it's really tricky and there's a lot of yelling. It's a very intense time when you've got, you know, five tons of concrete, you know, hanging from a chain and all these little bodies around and, you know, no one wearing orange or anyone <laughs> looking like they're in charge. The piece that'll be in the show this year is, is called Waiting to be Born. And the woman is a very large woman who is, you can, her head is really defined, but the rest of her body looks like it's in a chrysalis and that she's breaking out of this. It's another big piece I had in the show was um, kind of prescient because <clears throat> it was done years ago and um, it's of a uh, South American woman and her hands are lifted um, up and one is like beckoning and the other one is is kind of saying no. So there's the question of, of um, whether they, what is happening to their culture basically, and also s trying to stop um, the destruction of their culture and so on and so forth. And I believe the, the South American woman may be 10 or 11 feet tall when she's all put together. I always tell people the same thing if they don't know anything about sculpture, because a lot of people come and they say, oh, well, you know, what I think of art, I think of a picture of a beautiful deer jumping over like a fence and there's this field and the sun is setting. And I'm like, yeah, okay, good. Well, that's art. But that's not all art is, you know, and I would say if you don't know anything about sculpture and you don't know anything specifically about outdoor sculpture, look at what it's made out of. That's the first thing. Forget about what the artist is trying to say or some conceptual idea. If you don't know anything about it, just think about how they put it together, what it's made out of. And once you get past that, then we can start talking about the ideas behind it and whether you like it or not, and all this other kind of stuff. But just try and relate to the thing just as an object, you know, first and foremost. And it's like, a, it's a primal thing. A million years ago, when people were walking around on Earth, they were not looking at videos. <laughs> you know, it's fancy. I mean, they weren't looking at photographs. They weren't looking at screens. They were looking at a rock that was in front of them. They were looking at a tree. And that's what this is all about. For me, it's about that primal experience of, of experiencing uh, an object outside, an object that was made by another human being, and then it's your job to figure out why, if you're so inclined. I think the North Bankton Outdoor Sculpture Show is really uh, uh, an example of a great place to, to come to see sculpture, to understand it, to uh, be open to it, to bring your family. It's free and it's just a chance to really look at a variety of work, some that you might get, some that might, you might not understand. Uh, you might find something that you'd love to have in your garden. You know, just looking at it and immersing yourself in it. At No Boss, what you get is real. You know, whether the person is, is you know, a great artist or not, it doesn't matter. It was made by them, and it's a piece that people can relate to. The show is very um, easygoing. There's no presumption. It's all about the work and the people. And I'm all about sculpture, so what's a better way of, uh, of being about sculpture than trying to put it in in front of people. The thing I like the best about the area now is there's so much going on with people working together and coming together uh, with a purpose, which I think is really, really uh, very positive, very positive. It gives me hope for the future and the hope for a community.
and a hope about things to evolve in a positive way. And art does become the conduit. Mm -hmm.